So, I got some cash, because that's all this guy deals in. And I am now headed out to Hastings, Minnesota. Joe's Auto Sales, right outside of Vermillion. Bring cash, bring long pants, bring your own tools. Oh, one last thing, 50 bucks for the seats. All right, so these are them. They're in rough shape. Gonna need to do a lot of rust repair on these guys. But everything is intact. That's a good thing. So just upholstery goes around and hog rings. I don't think these are called hog rings. Can't remember what they're called, but it just curls around and hog rings onto the frame. No, onto the spring that's attached to the frame. These somehow keep the keep it from going. Look at the straps just gone to nature. All this stuff's gone to nature. So I'm gonna have to rebuild this. Those are the doors, and those are the backs of the seats. Fun stuff, man. Fun stuff. All right, so here's my plan. I took one of the seats off, and if you look, I mean, the frame is rusted really badly. It still works as a box, or as a spring. They, the ties need to, you know... Needs new ties and stuff like that. These are all supposed to be tied together to kind of give it some strength. But there's this was like, like for example, this piece encompassed the entire thing. And look at it's just, it's gone. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to remove these. I really think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to remove these. And then I'm going to recondition the frame. All right, first phase done. I took all the webbing off, so I'm going with Operation Plywood base with padding on top, and then we're gonna have somebody make a uh, the upholstery for it. Uh, so I cleaned everything up and rust converted it, and we're going to let that dry. We're gonna keep coating it until it dries black. Looks like we're getting pretty close to what we want, right? Here is the uh, finished salvaged and, uh, product. So I had to get rid of the springs, of course, but I salvaged it, found, found it, luckily, rust converted it, just kept putting the rust conversion on until it dried black. Then I top coated with an original equipment black uh, just to protect it, and then I installed it. When I pulled it from the salvage yard, I was really careful to get everything I could possibly get. I could not get the seat belts uh, or the seat belt um, mounts, but I could get everything else. So let's walk you through it. This is a hanger. So the hanger um, gets bolted to the body with one, two, three bolts. That hanger um, uh, is a main attachment point for the frame. The frame has a welded tab and that's how it gets attached to this main hanger. There's a secondary hanger. It does not get bolted as far as the frame getting bolted onto the hanger. All the hanger simply does is make sure that the uh, gives it some support so that it stays level. The frame stays level and that is attached bolted once twice to the body and then the frame hangs on top of that. The last attachment point is to the front of the tub. The frame rests on top of this shelf, this tub shelf, and then one bolt goes through the body uh, on, and uh, once again, it's a welded tab onto the frame. Careful here because the gas tank is right on the other side of this wall. They sandwich the gas tank, it goes that way underneath this um, sheet metal here. So part one of the rear seat restoration project is completed. Rat Trap Productions, we teach you how to do stuff. Today, I taught you the first part in installing the rear jump seats in a 60s, 70s, and even 80s Ford Country Squire.